Hello there, my friends. Welcome to episode one of season two, the ultimate Skyrim Let's Play. Um, I have chills, to be honest with you. I have like a big old adrenaline spike right now. It's kind of crazy to be back in front of you guys, so to speak, and to be doing another Let's Play series. It's very surreal. There's been a lot of buildup to this one, so I hope that it can um, match your expectations. What is happening over there? There's two men drifting away. What are you guys doing? It's like somehow they fell off the boat. Well, we're off to a great start. Um, Wraithen, our man, feels very comfortable. Anyway, um, it's been a very long time since we last got a chance to do this. I'm really excited for this playthrough. I hope that you guys enjoyed the prologue stuff. What I'm going to go ahead and do right now is uh, pause it just for a moment. You can see there's our man Wraithen. This is one of the few reliable ways to pause the game now is to open up the developer console. So let's talk for a minute about what's going on in this playthrough and what I kind of plan to do with it. Now, the prologue video, if you haven't seen the prologue videos yet, I do strongly recommend watching them. They are uh, available on the front page of the channel under the season two playlist. They really go into depth about our character's backstory. Our character's name is Wraithen Voss, for those of you who don't know. He is a Red Guard, a native of Hammerfell, an aristocratic son of two famous generals from the Great War. And there's just a lot of information and backstory that those two videos present that I think it would behoove you to know going into this series because I'm going to be referencing a lot of people and events and places that you might not know otherwise. So if you're fine with that and you haven't seen the prologue, go ahead and just continue on watching. Um, so really, I think the big questions, I don't want to take too long um, digging through this because I think you guys have waited a very long time for some actual gameplay. And I would like to get that to you post haste. And frankly, I would like to play myself. But uh, I wanted to talk very briefly about who Wraithen is at this point and just kind of give you guys a sense of where his head is at right now. So as most of you probably know, we are, give me a second, I'm gonna start my timer here. I forgot I have to do that now. It's been so long since I recorded anything like this. Really, it's been so long since I did an actual playthrough instead of just play testing. But anyway, so our man Wraithen is a, like I said, he's a, a Red Guard aristocrat, or at least he grew up that way. He's 20 years old. Um, he's spent the past two years aboard a merchant vessel named the Vespara for anyone who's interested. And that vessel was captained by a woman named Sabira, who was a close friend of Wraithen's mother. Sabira, what's a good way of putting this? I think the most important thing for us to establish right now is Wraithen's mindset and what his primary goal is as a character. As those of you who watch the prologue will know, very recently, in the past two years, Wraithen and his sister Rihanna were forced to flee their lives as aristocratic children in the city of Tanith in Hammerfell. For the past two years, they've been aboard Sabira's merchant ship, and they've all been sailing to Windhelm, to Skyrim, which is where we are now, in order to escape the prying eyes, so to speak, of the Thalmor Intelligence Network. The Thalmor are hunting for Wraithen and Rihanna and their family, or at least that is the safe assumption after Wraithen's father was assassinated by Thalmor insurgents, and I guess, I don't know if you'd call them insurgents, Thalmor agents, we'll call them. And his mother may be as well, we actually don't know what the fate of his mother was. But anyway, Wraithen and his sister spent the last two years aboard a merchant ship. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that because I think that it's important in establishing where Wraithen's head is kind of at right now. Um, he may have grown up an aristocrat, but what I like to imagine is that in this last, these last two years, while he was aboard this merchant ship, he was pretty much treated more or less like an ordinary crew member by Sabira. 
I, I really like the character of Sabira. I had a really good time writing her and just kind of imagining her backstory. And I, I picture her as a very tough, but also compassionate person. She's a childhood friend of Raithen's mother. That's how I picture Raithen's mother, frankly, too. Um, I think that's maybe why she and Sabira were friends. Among other reasons, of course. I think that Sabira knew what sort of situation she would be delivering Raithen and Rihanna into here in Skyrim. It's a very harsh land with a lot of very harsh things happening right now. And I think that she felt it important, she being Sabira, to prepare the children for Skyrim and life here in Skyrim as well as she could. And for that reason, I think she had them working aboard the ship for those two years. I don't think that they were just kind of, you know, hanging out in a lavishly decorated cabin back home. Or sorry, uh, below deck. And I think, oh, and it also kind of makes sense to me to have them doing that kind of thing because it's a better cover. I think that it would be important for them. I think they would blend right in, they being Raithen and Rihanna. They would blend right in as crew members aboard a Red Guard merchant vessel, you know, because merchant vessels make port calls all the time to pick up and offload goods, and the Thalmor are actively looking for these two individuals, Wraith and, Rih and Rihanna. So it makes sense to me why they would adopt a cover as just crew aboard this merchant ship. And I think getting back to where Wraithen is now internally, I think that he is going to continue this cover. I thought a lot about this, about what his primary motivation is. And as cliche as it sounds, I think that for a man, Raven, revenge against the Thalmor really is the first thing on his mind right now. I think that they just took everything from him. At least that's how he would see it. Everything he's ever loved, both of his parents, his sister now who recently passed away on the way to Windhelm. The Thalmor are pretty much responsible for all of it. So I think what his primary, I think that in, you know, kind of in, in his head and in his heart, our man Raithen is very angry, he's very scared, and he's kind of left to his own devices here. And I think what he'd like to do most is figure out how best he can hurt the Thalmor for what they've done. And he also grew up more or less learning about the Thalmor and their, we'll call it bloody history, frankly. His parents fought them directly for 10 years in the Great War and indirectly for the following years in what, you know, is essentially a cold war between the Thalmor and the rest of Tamriel up until now. What is still a cold war, frankly. There's also got to be a, a pun in there for it being cold. And <laughs> it's Skyrim, if you'll indulge me. Anyway. I think that's what he wants to do most, is take down the Thalmor. And we can safely assume that Raithen is educated. He grew up an aristocrat. He had very influential parents. I think, and especially with the past two years aboard the merchant ship and going to Skyrim, I think that he would be reasonably well educated in the history of the Thalmor. He would be educated enough in the current state of affairs in Skyrim, at least a little bit. But of course, news does not exactly travel fast when you're aboard a ship. Um, you may be faster for you than many other people in Tamriel, but you really only hear bits and pieces when you stop in port. And, you know, he's got to be careful. So did his sister because he doesn't want to blow his cover or anything. So I think what we're doing right now as our first kind of foray into the world and into Windhelm, I think that Raithen is going to maintain his cover as a crewman aboard this merchant ship. And I think he's going to try and just stay under the radar and gather information. I think that he knows something of the Stormcloak and Imperial conflict, maybe not that much. I think that he would know that the Stormcloaks more or less are diametrically opposed to the Thalmor. So maybe he could be interested in joining them. But it's, you know, it's a question of whether or not that's what he believes will be the best opportunity for him to hurt them because he's got a lot to consider. He can't just go around saying, hey, I hate the Thalmor. 
what's the best way do you think for me to take him out to just, you know, random people? Because that's a good way to get yourself noticed. I think that with his significant lack of resources and also his lack of experience, frankly, I think he's smart enough to know that he's not in a super advantageous position here and that if he wants to really get one over on the Thalmor the way that he really wants to, he's got to play the long game a little bit. He's got to be patient. He's got to evaluate his options and just kind of see what he can do to just fuck him up, frankly. So that's where I think he's at mentally. That's what we're going to try and do. So our first kind of objective is going to be to put out the feelers. I think that so here, this is a good opportunity to unpause the game and show you guys kind of what our resources are. Well, let me get rid of that crosshair. Um, right now, this is all that we have on us. We've got a little bit of food, we've got some basic supplies, uh, an iron sword, some leather armor, some, uh, you know, basic potions and lockpick, survivor's guide, village red wine. So this is pretty much it. This is all we've got um, to our name, essentially. Oh, and about 1,500 gold, exactly 1,500 gold. Even that, I think, is something that Wraithen's going to want to keep under the radar. My, I think his cover story is this. I think that he would tell people that he was a crewman for a merchant ship and he ended up being let go more or less because the captain of the ship couldn't afford to pay uh, his wage and so maybe he's just chosen to get off here in Windhelm and uh, more or less make a life for himself at least for right now until he can you know become crew on another ship or whatever he's going to do but th I think that's a suitable cover story that explains why a red guard is here in Windhelm and would kind of give him enough of a cover so that he could go around and conduct his investigation more or less so primary goal for Wraithen right now is to accrue information to figure out how exactly he's going to go ahead and take on the Thalmor but that's the long term goal I think in the short term it's finding that information. It's getting stronger, frankly, because, like I said, he's not stupid. We know that he knows. He's smart enough to know that he's not just going to go taking on the Thalmor with the abilities and the resources that he has right now. So it's about getting stronger. It's about figuring out the best way to accomplish this goal of taking down the Thalmor. And I think we'll go ahead and just dive right into it. Uh, I apologize if that was a little bit of a ramble. It's been a while since I've done this. But uh, I hope that it sets the tone for you guys well enough. Oh, exposure tutorial. For those of you who don't know, we are running Frostfall. It's part of Ultimate Skyrim. There's going to be a few big differences in this playthrough versus the last one. One thing you guys might notice is that I'm using a gamepad now. This is one of the new features of Ultimate Skyrim is total uh, gamepad support, which is really awesome. Um, I prefer using a gamepad in a lot of games, so it just kind of a uh, it was a natural inclusion after a while, and especially with the incredible work that our man Dunk Smith has done with I Equip and Gamepad Plus Plus. So something else I wanted to do for this playthrough is just kind of absorb the atmosphere a bit more. I noticed in the other episodes, I there's not a lot of dead air time where I'm not talking. I think I'm, if that's my goal, I'm not quite there yet, at least for this episode. I've already spent most of it talking, but we'll kind of see how it goes. So this is a big moment. This is our man's kind of first foray into a brand new country, a brand new city. And I think he's scared and I don't think he knows what to expect, you know? The back gate of Windhelm. I think one day... We're going to look back at this moment. Hi, mister. Oh. Would you like to buy some flowers? Please? Oh, man. Um. Sure. What do you have? I'm trying to figure out what kind of person Wraithen is and how he would react in a situation like this. I almost went out of my way, kid. Right? Because he's angry and he's pissed, but I think he's polite enough. I think he's not a bad dude. I think he's not going to tell a kid to go fuck themselves in a freezing country like this. <laughs> Maybe he's a little sympathetic. Jeez, I gotta say, Sophie, you're a... Uh, these flowers, they must be the, the pick of the litter, so to speak, because they are expensive. One flower. Who are you, Sophie? They're... they're 
dead. My mama died when I was little. I... I don't remember her very well. My father was a Stormcloak soldier. One day he left and didn't come back. I'm all alone. I... I try to sell flowers so I can buy food. It's not much, but... What else can I do? Yikes. Well... Thanks. Oops. Thanks for talking to me. That is... Oh, actually, you know what? I equips menu just launched there, and that's not supposed to be happening, so I'm going to make a quick save, and I'm going to reload, because that'll typically fix any of those kinds of things. I gotta say, it is yes. so strange to be back. All right, oh, it didn't happen that time. Whatevs. It is so strange to be back in the saddle, so to speak. I'm really excited to be doing this with you guys. I have a lot of new video content planned. I'm thinking these episodes are going to be the standard length of about 30 minutes and they're going to go, I'd say, about once a week. And that way I still have time to develop Hold the there, experience. Oh. Been instructed to tell all visitors that this is Stormcloak territory. Oh, yeah? Keep your nose clean while you're here, outsider. Now move along. Yes, sir. Well then. Windhelm. Here we are. Is that Sophie? She's such a cutie. Maybe one day we'll come back and adopt her, but I think that's the farthest thing from Wraithen's mind right now. And what might you need? Hmm? Now this is interesting because as some of you will know, Wraithen is half Dunmer. He's half Dark Elves. So it'll be interesting to see him acclimate himself with the Grey Quarter, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Now one of the things we have to do, I actually forgot about this, is we haven't assigned any skills yet. And I'll give you guys kind of a sense of what I'm thinking, ugh, I think I'm cold, so I've got some skill debuffs right now, but that's okay. Now, what I'm thinking for our man here is a little bit of a hybrid build, at least a little bit of magic, primarily destruction, maybe some alteration, because I think he's going to go light armor. But I'm going to try to play to the red guard strengths, at least at first. So that means destruction. Actually, red guards, if you didn't know this, in rec... Oh, this is important to mention. So right now, I'm playing on a slightly early build, well, a fairly early build. I'm playing on an early build of Ultimate Skyrim 4.1.0, which does utilize Requiem 3.1.0. So that's what we're running right now, um, just in case anyone's interested. My own research has yielded new arcane formulae. Choose up to two you wish to study. Oh, man, so I get the entire... Because I know... Perfect. I know, that's actually great. I forgot that that's how you learn spells sometimes in Requiem when you take those core perks. Um, that actually makes me want to get, oh no, I already have Oak Flush. I was going to say that I have Fire Sparks already. So now I have the other two. So I've got basic destruction spells in all three elements, which is really nice. So we're going to take some Weapon Mastery, and I think the next skill here is going to be Light Armor, which is where Evasion, rather. Okay. So that is our first three perks assigned. I wanted to wait to do that until I was on camera like this, so you guys could see kind of where I'm going. And now, I think I'm pretty tired here from the journey, so uh, the first thing on our list is going to be... Let's find a place to sleep and uh, rest just for a little bit, just like a brief nap, you know what I mean? Why don't we go ahead and check out the Grey Quarter? Now, I like to think that Wraithen knows something of the Grey Quarter already. It's not that he's just, you know, completely green as far as that goes. Ulfric wants Skyrim for the Nords. He doesn't trust what he calls outsiders. You've seen how we live? Cramped alleys, run-down buildings, few guard patrols. Even the name Grey Quarter is an insult. I'll speak to Ulfric soon, but I make no promises that I can change his mind. That's all I ask. With your help, we have a chance to make a better life for ourselves here. For that, I thank you. Hmm. I thought the Grey Quarter would be a haven for my kind. I was wrong. Now see, this is the kind of information gathering that I was talking about. The idea that the Dark Elves are being treated poorly here is something that would register as important information, I think, for Raven. 
Windhelm is divided into four quarters. The Grey Quarter is the one that's home to all the city's dark elves. If it looks to you like an impoverished slum, that's because it is. Ulfric prefers that we live in squalor. He has mm. nothing but disdain for anyone who isn't a Nord. He tolerates us, but that's the extent of his hospitality. Well, that is one person's opinion. Not a Let's day see. goes by that I don't think about returning to the ancestral home of my people. Still, even with the rough treatment we've had at the hands of Ulfric and his lot, I've got ties here. It's probably more trouble to pack up and leave than it is to stay. Besides, Amberus can't run the corner club on his own. The corner club, that's what we're looking for here. It was a pleasure. Maybe that's where he's going, so we can go ahead and follow him. Do the signs say anything? They don't. I know that that's the uh, general goods merchant. Look at that. What are those called? Neches? I can't remember. Ooh. The models are so cool, though, aren't they? It's like a pet. What's up, guy? How about you? Farm work is hard work. It's good to relax when I can. But I still have to listen to my brothers harping about injustices. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, hello. Blade and shadow. Silence and death. These are my arts. For a modest fee, I'll make great art for you. Unfortunately, we can't quite afford that yet. Walk always in shadows, so that you will see your foes before they see you. Gotcha. Now, on a more forward-thinking note, I think that in service of this primary goal of taking down the Thalmor, right? You need a lot of stuff to do that. You need power, personally and on, infrastructurally, we'll say. Fire. Um, you need money. I guess that kind of serves that same power infrastructure. So I think, you know, as it is for a lot of early game RPG characters, I think money is going to be one of those big goals for us. So complain about the way we're treated. What good does complaining do? And what do you suggest we do? Hmm. Need another drink. You can almost feel the uh, kind of the oppression or the Apparently air of oppression, rather. Perception of it. Sure why I should care. Oh, really? Let's see here. Well, you see where we have to live. This forgotten alley. All the filth from the upper quarters flows downhill, like they say. Good luck getting one of the guards to help with anything. I'll try to get Ulfric to even come down here to see the squalor, but the High Lord of His Mightiness couldn't find the time. Oh, yeah? Welp. Does, uh, do they not have any rooms? Because I would like to stay, but... Another drink. I'll be right here. I mean, I don't know. Maybe not. It, to me, it seems like if I'm putting myself in Wraithen's shoes, he would much rather stay in a place that is maybe not so... Like, I think he's spent the past two years aboard a ship. So as far as personal comfort goes, I don't think it matters that much to him. I also think it's a better cover if he's down here. If he's supposed to be this, you know, down on his luck, um, former crew member of a merchant ship, I think it makes a lot more sense Sarah. that he would stay in a place like this, but maybe they don't have any free beds right now. Let's see, nope, that one's owned. Nice cooking pot. Well, let's go ahead and check one more time, and if not, we're gonna have to go and rent a room in a different inn, because we need to sleep. We need to rest up, getting a little bit hungry. Things have been a lot worse. Gotta prepare ourselves, you know what I mean? Like to play something. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's offering any sort of actual lodging. I have a seat. There should be plenty of space. Thanks, Amberus. But we're gonna remember him. We're gonna remember this place. I think that it's a, a, you know, of course, like a tavern is one of the best places to find information on where things are at. But on the whole, Number one goal, get situated, rest up a little bit, and then see if we can't find some work. See if we can't talk to people, see what the general consensus is here, get whatever information we can. Be on the lookout. The butcher could be around any corner. Hmm. Now, the whole butcher quest line could be an interesting first start for our character, like a first dramatic arc, you know what I mean? Something to kind of wet our whistle. Hello. No lollygagging. All right, take it easy. 
Ooh. Crisp morning air. What time is it right now? 10.15. Now, with our meta knowledge, we know that this is the inn. But I think it looks like an inn to just about anyone, right? Look at that. One of the other reasons I wanted to use a gamepad for this playthrough was because I was watching the old episodes and my gosh, I would make myself sick sometimes with how much I move the camera around. Um, I find that gamepad makes for a lot more cinematic kind of camera control, so to speak. And I like the analog movement too. It's not so fun when you have to switch between two movement options. Hello, Miss Lady. My friend died. Things won't be the same without her. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's quite the thing to drop on a person as the first topic of conversation. I probably shouldn't laugh. Um, I'd like to run a room. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. You know what? I probably should have just bought an extended stay, but that's okay. Now I was thinking about opening an Imperial Mail account because that'll allow us to you know, drop off our gold and things like that. But I almost wonder if at this point, Raythan would be hesitant to do that yet. I think that just having any sort of paper trail of you being in a place, it's not a good idea. So even if he opened it under a different name, I think I'm going to hold off for now. And I'm going to go ahead and just take a nap. I'll show you to your room, right this way. So we got to remember. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Okay. Well... Good thing I know where the room is. At least I'm assuming it's this one. Usually it is. Nice. Okay. We got like a little wash basin here. We got our own bath. Might be nice to just, you know, go for a nice quick nap. And then get a nice bath and a nice snack. I'm going to call it four hour nap. All right, now you guys notice in the top left, there was an, um, a message saying that our respawn point was set to this location. Now, this is something I want to talk to you guys about. This playthrough is not permadeath the way that the other ones were ostensibly. This playthrough has incorporated, it's actually one of the main reasons why I wanted to introduce death mechanics was one, because God, Skyrim can be so wonky sometimes that, you know, it's very easy to die to strange things. But two, I wanted to give us a a way to justify a very detailed backstory because frankly, I can't spend the time that I would like developing our character's backstory if that character might just die at any moment. Uh, so this is my kind of compromise. Now, here's the important story bit. Death is going to be incorporated into the story of our character. Where Raythan's at right now, he has no idea that if he were to die, he has no idea that anything would be any different than how, what's, God, a good way. He has no reason to believe that he wouldn't just die outright if he were killed. Let's just say that. So if and when we have to cross that bridge, um, it's going to be a pretty interesting moment for our character. It's something that I've been thinking about a lot. Get a nice bath. And then we're headed upstairs. Shaman. Hmm. Hello. Need something? No, I'm good, thank you. Alright then. What's everyone doing? What time is it right now? It's about 2.45. It's a strange time for people to be hanging out in the inn. I guess people drink at all times of the day, don't they? Alright, well, we have... Um, oops, that's the wrong button. Also, pardon me, I'm still getting used to my own control scheme a little bit, so you may see me kind of make a mistake here and there. Um, please, pardon my dust. Oh, that's right, whoops. I have to drink directly from the inventory. How am I doing? All right, perfect. And I also have some cooked horker meat. 
So my needs are all taken care of now. And why don't we go ahead and, you know what? I think my goal right now in keeping with this whole cover business is to go ahead and get a job. That's a good way to convince people that you're just here in town looking for work and to, you know, make it day to day, right? Am I wrong? So let's go ahead and head outside. Take in the crisp Windhelm afternoon. And head down to the market. Here we go. Job listings. Come on, missives board. This board sometimes takes a little bit to populate itself. There we go. Missive, clear out dark shade cops. Now we're gonna have to be careful here because I would say that Rathen has martial training. He has a one-handed skill of 15, right? So that is, to me, analogous to someone who has some training, but is not particularly experienced even not that particularly skilled, but far more skilled than your average farmer will say. But I also consider those skills relative to the difficulty, excuse me, of Skyrim, like the specific area of the world. And as we know, Skyrim is a very harsh place. So where I'd place Wraithen on a, a skill curve is right towards the bottom, just enough to be able to defend himself, maybe, but uh, not much more than that. So, you know, we gotta get money, we gotta get trained. We gotta get some experience under our belt, I'd say. Um, deliver potion to Kynesgrove, letter to Kynesgrove. Now, I'd like to imagine that our man Braithen has a map. Let's go, what is the shortcut for map? I don't remember. Maybe this? Yes, it is. All right, now, on this map that was so graciously provided by Sabira, we'll say, we can see, oh, actually, well, <laughs> Kynesgrove is not on this map. But let's go ahead and uh, just role play that it is, that we can see it, that we know that Kynes Grove is somewhere in this general vicinity, somewhere south south of Windhelm, excuse me. So what we're gonna do here, it looks like we've got some easy jobs for deliveries to Kynes Grove. We've actually got three, that's really good luck. So we got a letter, a potion, and a weapon. Now between those three, that should be a pretty hefty chunk of change. All right, let's go ahead, collect Ghana's wooden heavy bow from Norellian. So Norellian, whoever that is, right, has a couple deliveries that he needs done. So I guess it makes sense that he would post them as he has. Oh, and then we can train. God, sometimes I forget all the different possibilities. I need to make those tutorial videos and I need to watch them myself, right? All right, well, while we're here, I'm going to exercise some maiden knowledge as well. Let me, uh... But we'll justify it, role-playing-wise, right? Missive, deliver letter to Kynesgrove. Looking for a courier to deliver a letter to Kynesgrove. See if, no, I don't want to discard it. Delivery, Tova Shattershield. They're expecting the letter soon, so be sure to deliver it on time. Now, I don't know where Tova is, but I know where Norellian is. No. See, upfront payment. It's tonic, da 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 All right, so we have a couple days to deliver these. Oh, what loss, my friend. I'd appreciate it if you don't bother my wife. Oh, well, there we go. She's still in mourning. Your wife is in mourning. Our little girl died recently. Oh, I forgot about this. But nothing gives my toe a peace. I've been looking for an amulet of RK to remind my wife that... Oh, my gosh, we're already over 30 minutes. But I can't find one. If I find one, I'll bring it to you. All right, well, now we have a, a little bit of a side quest. God, I just cannot imagine any pain that's worse than losing a child. Ugh, that is a lot. Please forgive You know what? Lord Nilsine has been wrecked since her sister was here. Got any ale or mead? I have this. Good day. Excuse me, Torbjorn. Um, well, we're gonna have to go ahead and pick up 
the letter from his wife. I don't know if he plans on going back there today or if he's just going to kind of spend the day drinking. But before we sign off for this episode, let's go ahead and pick up our deliveries from Norellian. And that way we're set to go for the next one. And that'll be kind of our, our cliffhanger. Well, I have you guys here. Thank you so much for joining me at the beginning of this adventure. I really mean it. Um, I hope that the wait was not too interminable for you guys. And I think that this playthrough is really going to be something special. So thank you for joining me as we do it. You know, I'm here for the delivery job, my guy. Oh, I just interrupted him while he was talking about a white file of some sort. What were you arguing about? Well, here, I'll get the these uh what's it called these delivery items and then just for the sake of once again gathering information what were you guys arguing about work is all. I finally derived the location of the white file but this doted busybody won't let me get it hmm well so here's one cool thing I can say this at the very end of our episode one of the reasons why I like to start a playthrough with such an extensive backstory is I find that it really helps me decide what to spend my time on and what not to, um, as opposed to kind of knowing, having like a maiden knowledge of the sort of quests and stuff that are in the game and fi finding a justification for your character to do those quests. I don't think there's anything wrong with that either, and I think that we'll still do a fair bit of that with Wraithen, but it's helpful for things like side quests, right? Where you hear about something like this, and I just think about the mindset that my character's in based on his backstory. And I think, at least for the moment, I'm not really interested in what this guy's talking about. You know, What's I got it. To you? Not like you could do anything about it. Sure. I mean, I got a delivery job to do, and that's what I'm currently concerned with. There's, It's just the last thing on my mind right now, so I don't know. Maybe we can pick it up at some point in the future. Let's go ahead and wander on over. There's one last thing that I want to do before we end this episode. So we'll call this one an extra long one just for the <laughs> the first episode special for season two. Look at this. A graveyard in the snow, right? Oof. Look at this. Hold it there. Keep your distance. What happened here? Another girl killed. This is Susanna from Candlehearth Hall. Served me a drink just a few nights ago, but I can't say I knew her. Another? Susanna's the third. So this must it's have been the girl the that the Down bartender at, at Candlehearth was talking four. about. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sounds like the guards aren't doing their job. That's a stupid thing to say if you're trying to fly under the radar. We're stretched thin as it is with a war. Nobody has the time to spend on this. Not pleasant, but it's the truth. All right, so here's something that I think Wraithen's going to get involved in. Because it's important to remember, Wraithen just lost his sister, who is about this girl's age. I think that this strikes a chord with him. And it's something that, I don't know, I just think he'd be involved in it, or he would try to, you know? Something that I feel like he could make a difference in. If you want to help, ask some of these gawkers if they saw anything useful. I'm going to examine the body before the rats can get to it. All right. And with that, I think we're going to go ahead and leave it. This will be the end of this episode. And in the next one, we're going to investigate this murder, at least a little bit for now. And we're going to go ahead and pick up that letter that we need to get from Tova. And we're going to go on a little journey to Kynesgrove, I think. So once again, thank you guys for joining me. It's really special to me to be back in the saddle. I don't know how many times I've used that analogy <laughs> or that not analogy metaphor this episode. Um, I'm a little rusty, so please pardon my repetition. And thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you in the next one.